Hi there. I'm back on this wonderful field, which is... Even though it's been done to death for decades, it's turning up the odd really nice thing. I even came back here briefly for about an hour the other day, literally just that, and found a load more Roman coins, including a lovely Cistercius of Commodus, which is so fragile. The detail's wonderful on it, but it's literally just a very smooth surface. And I can see that just by if it chips away, there's just crumbly bronze underneath, so I don't even dare clean it. But in the right light, it's an absolute beauty. Anyway, the seeds really, the wheat's really coming through quite fast. I, this is probably the last time I'll have on it. I'm trying to go a bit more carefully and more and more things are coming up. It's fabulous. Lots more little Roman coins, nothing really to write home about apart from this one. Now, it's probably the most nondescript of the lot, but I can tell because I found them before that it is, it's a Celtic bronze coin because Roman coins just don't look like that. Um, I can see what might be a horse or something like that on one side and not much on the other. But, I mean, I wouldn't know what that was had I not found them before, but I have found them and I just know that that is Celtic. And this was on this exact spot where I found that gold coin the other day. So it doesn't surprise me to find Iron Age and Celtic stuff, but that's just, you know, it's not the most beautiful, but there's plenty of detail on it. Really pleased with that. Hi there, welcome to headquarters, where we're going to have a quick look at these um, Celtic bronze coins. I don't think I did that much Celtic on this one. I think I, did, I think I said Celtic once. This is the one we found on the day. And as I said in the video, I know what it is because I have found them before. And the one thing that they have in common is they all seem to be quite concave or convex. And even though my ones, and these are some of my better ones, are in such poor quality, um, they do seem, if you look into your ancient British coins, I talk about this book a lot, if you're interested in Celtic coins or you've got a chance of finding them, I really would invest in this. It's a brilliant book. If you go to the Fast Identifier, where they have the gold status, silver status, they then have a section on, on bronze and potin coins. And there's quite a lot of them and I think I'm right in saying that they were the earliest coins the bronze ones to be to be um, introduced by the Celtic tribes the ones in the book are in really lovely condition you can see all sorts of detail but the ones I find really do not survive very well at all but like lots of things you only need to find one research it and you'll know what you're dealing with they again they often have horses on one side or bulls and all sorts of things, stars, that one's actually got nothing on that one, on the other. Um, I don't know why they survive so badly, or at least the ones that I find. I mean, if you look at Roman coins, I've got a tray here. I'm, I'm not saying all Roman coins are wonderful, most of them are very grotty, but that one, for example, and that one, for example, two here. Let me get rid of that are much of the same size and roughly the same composition, and yet they survive far better. That's a lovely one of the wolf, um, the Herbs Roma, and that I think is Claudius, Claudius Gothicus. And you stand them up against the Celtic ones, and there's a, there's an, there's a massive difference. I mean, this gives me also a quick chance to show off the odd silver one or, or, and gold one, which are, these ones I've picked because they're exactly the same size. They're, they're little um, silver units, or in the case of the gold one, it's a quarter stator. As I said, roughly the same size horses. That one's rather lovely, that silver one. It's got, it's the Cunabellinus Phoenix, I think, on one side. Um, but there you go, so there are your Celtic coins. So when you're finding grotty little copper bronzy coins, um, which feel a little bit concave or convex, well, you're probably dealing with a Celtic one. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to all that and let's go back to the fields. And then just behind me, a spindle wall, a biconical spindle wall. Now, again, they're hard to date these, but I can't see further than Roman. 
or even earlier than that, perhaps. It might be Celtic too. The fact is that I, find, I don't find anything in this field apart from shotgun cartridges, rifle rounds, and Roman stuff. So I, I don't think it could be anything else. I think it has to be Roman. And it's an absolute beauty. Not much decoration, if any, on it, but that's just lovely. So there are certainly things about it here still. But I've got to be a bit careful. I can't go digging all over the place, deep holes, because all the wheat's coming through. And Alan, the farmer's a mate of mine, and I don't think he'd be very happy. And then, like always, there's masses of pottery everywhere, but not just normal pottery, lovely bits of rim. There's bits of colour and glazing, even though the Romans didn't really do that much glazing. That's definitely got something on it, that one. That's Roman. Um, I think that must be Samian ware, a really nice big chunk of it too. And another lovely pot here. I'm not even picking up the red stuff. I'm just going for the slightly more unusual bits. And then, now I'm not sure about these personally, but they do reckon that oyster shells are a brilliant sign of people eating and just generally a good sign of inhabitation. Um, I mean, I think a lot of smaller shells, the sort of muscly type shells, could be dropped by birds from nearby rivers and streams and stuff. But I think that's a proper oyster. So, <sighs> I don't have much time. We'll do our best. See what happens. Anyway, I've got two signals here, very close to each other. That's a bit foily sounding. Well, I know what that is. That's a musket ball I found earlier. <laughs> so we can... That's not the one. That's one. And that's one there. Let's go for the boring one first. Well, it's out and it's near my nice one. Okay, that's definitely a dud. That's just a bit of old cartridge. But, what about this one? Now, that's got to be something, hasn't it? <sighs> oh my God, wouldn't you know? <laughs> it's a cartridge, isn't it? The crappy bit of cartridge was part of the bigger bit of cartridge. But anyway, we'll keep going because I'm really, really confident today. And it's nice crumbly soil that even though we are digging into the grain and the seed, it's not wet and nasty. We're not making too much of a mess. I think one day I'm going to come back here with just a couple of bin bags, fill it with all the Roman pottery I'm finding. It is just everywhere and some of it is absolutely fabulous. Um, I'd love to think of something fun to do with it all one day, but that's just the lovely piece of rim there of something or other. And then that's just a lovely colour as well, just sort of uh, it's just all over the place. Certain areas where it's really irony, you can just see it. I mean, this must have been some area back in the past. And I've just dug quite a deep hole here. And it's really high pitch and it's in that clod. <laughs> it's in here somewhere. Now that sort of sound. Oh, I can see it. Well. Ah, oh, God, I just can't be bothered sometimes with live digging. <laughs> it's a bit of old shrapnel or whatever it is, bomb stuff. Nothing. God, it sounded lovely, didn't it? But, uh, never mind. I got really excited about that. Try and do the best we can to make it look. That'll all be fine. That'll come up nice, all that now. As per usual, I'm afraid you're getting much the same view because of the wind. It's right behind me at the moment, so it shouldn't affect the microphone at all. That's got to be a coin. That's got to be a coin. And I've just found something completely fabulous, which I'll show you afterwards. In keeping with the Iron Age coin that we found, I mean, I'm a bit sort of blown away by it still. Look, another nice piece of grey ware. It's just all over the place. That's got to be, got to be a coin. Bronze coin.
No, just a bit of lead. A bit of funny shaped lead. God, the curse of the live digs. I don't know why I bother sometimes. Gosh, it's so gloomy at the moment. I don't know if you saw one of my last videos I put up of when I was detecting at the end of August and it was just so nice and bright and warm and sunny. Now, I've only ever found one of these before and it was in that field there, about 200 metres away. And I found another part of one of these quite recently, but not the, not, not the business end. And it's the actual blade end of a Bronze Age axe axe head and I'm absolutely well I mean I just don't find this sort of stuff very often now I think it is bronze age it was very deep and very wispy so I didn't I had to be so careful I didn't live dig it was going to take me forever but this is just a really a seriously special thing to come across um I just I, I don't know what sort of bronze age it is but the fact that the blade is in such good condition, it's a shame there isn't more of it, but I'm, but I'm not going to complain. I mean, that's just, well, that's pre the coin we found. I mean, I think that really is proper Bronze Age. I don't know much about Bronze Age stuff. I don't find enough of it to really research uh, it properly. Maybe I should start, but that's absolutely fabulous. I mean, it's so tactile. It's just... The, the, it's one of the things that you find, I mean, I've never even seen a whole one. I've, I've seen photographs of them, obviously, but I haven't sort of, but just, well, that's made my day. I don't really need to find anything after that. It's just such a tactile, it's like a sort of bit of sculpture in its own right. I'm completely thrilled. What a noise, what a beauty. Hi there, and welcome back for the last time. To have a quick look at this, I get so excited about these because of the sheer age of them. I, I knew it was Bronze Age, but I wasn't quite sure what it dated to. As I said in the video, I don't know much about th this era of finds because I don't find that much of it. And I should probably research it a bit more than I do. Taz, come here. Come on, up, up. <laughs> Taz, he's mooching about. These headquarters sections I always do right at the end of editing a video. And always go out for about three hours when I've finished um, and I'll be taking this one out with me because we're not going anywhere particularly exciting and he can't and he's not going to get lost but it's just a lovely completely once the video is out the way that I just can just completely relax and just have a lovely time go on then Tascals. anyway I put it on the detectingcub.co.uk for verification and those in the know, and there were lots of them, said late Bronze Age. So I believe that's from about 1300 BC to about 850, 800, 750 BC, which makes that a jolly old piece of metal. I mean, it just, I just find it staggering when I'm holding something just so old. Anyway, it's in pretty good condition. It's a socketed bronze axe head. It would have had further down it, and I'll show you some photographs of them here. A loop like that that's one I found quite recently in, um, in in another video and it would have sort of that's how it sort of I believe would have gone I think the loop was not only decorative but I think it also ha had a function in being able to sort of strap it to whatever the handle was I don't think I'm not sure how big these get I don't think an awful lot bigger is my gut feeling and yet, all the and, and yet a lot of research I do. They they always say that these were made for clearing woodland and shaping timber. Well, it might shape timber, but I don't know if it'll clear woodland. Um, please let me know if any Bronze Age experts are out there. Um, exactly what these were used for. I know they were decorative as well. They're, they're, often they're found in hordes, so they might have just been votive. A lot of them just decorative. Um, object but I suspect they were used as well um, but the condition of that gosh I wonder if that was used I'm not so sure it's perfect it's still quite sharp ah. anyway thank you very much for listening and let's go back to the fields and a lovely Griffea fossil look at that one beautiful Got lovely nose on him So it's rather an incredible piece of land, this. 
I mean, if I'm being really spoiled, I can say it's such a shame that I wasn't on it 20 years ago when the, I mean, it has been done a lot. I mean, can you imagine? I just, God knows what's been found on it if I'm still finding things like this. But from that age, now the field I'm talking about where I found the other bit, <laughs> one thing I've got to remind myself that this camera switches itself off after five minutes. So if I'm really banging on, but fortunately it's got a little red dot that I can see whether it stops recording or not. But anyway, that's that field. It's been heavily ploughed. We're going to have a look at it in a minute. Um, and when they flatten that, I've not found much on it, but I have found a Bronze Age axe head there as well. And maybe this is just... Anyway, brilliant. My time is almost up, sadly, and I've got an appointment this afternoon. I don't, don't want to worry you all, but um, I might have to have something done that's going to put me off games for a while. Um, so you might be getting loads of videos of me sitting at my desk reading you poetry and things. I don't, <laughs> don't know yet. I haven't really decided, but hopefully I'll be up and running fairly soon. Well, I've had more exciting signals today, I've got to say, but these little bronze coins, and that's what it could be, it might be another little Celtic one for all I know, I'm digging them all today. Well, it's getting better the deeper we're going. Just in the side there. Well, it's another tiny little Roman coin. Definitely nothing to get to write home about, but they're still here. They're still coming up. Not really much on it. It's just a small fourth century copper one. Well, I'm going to have to make this the last one. I suspect it's another little coin. And then I'm going to have to leave this field for a while. Um, but I think we've sort of done it. Some fabulous things have come off it, as I said. I mean, uh, I'll put the video of the gold one up in the what's it, in case you're interested. But um, I just think hopefully they'll give it another deep plough next year. And we can come and have another, another proper go at it. But it does go to show how, how much fields get done over the years. If they're left a year or two and they're given a decent plough, then stuff will come up again, definitely. And I am, I'm going to come back with a big bag and, do, and, and just collect all this pottery up. It's such a shame just to waste it. Especially if you think some of the bits I found today have got little cracks and little... Um, little ridges and stuff which are probably mistakes in the firing and you think that's 2,000 years ago they've worked that on a wheel and produced probably the most incredible stuff well knowing my luck today on the live stuff it's just going to be something rubbish it'll be a cartridge well it's in there I, like, I just like knowing how it sounds and the answer is really nice. It's a bronze coin. I'll, I'll put anything on it. Ah, no. <laughs> it's a button. It's a boring old modernish button. <sighs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. This feels, that's been really nice. It's been, it's been a bit of a gloomy day. Sun's come out in parts, but it's been really nice being out. And I'll see you all soon. <laughs>